soliciting emotions from your readers. This is the first thing you ask yourself when you're writing a story is what emotions do I want to bring out of my readers? Readers won't necessarily remember a description. They won't remember this cool action scene, but they'll remember how it made them feel. Everything you're doing is to give them a feeling. And they, when they feel something and it really energizes them, that's when they're buying the next book. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's when, they, that's when you have them hooked. So when you're writing a scene, make sure you're looking for what emotion will you get out of that? What emotion are you trying to evoke? Are you trying to shock them with these uh, extravagant displays? Are you trying to overwhelm their visual cortex with uh, exotic descriptions that uh, then become difficult to wade through? And it's a, it's a tough balance between a Tolkien-esque description of an area and going too far where you're just losing your readers, where they just get confused. So will you keep from wallowing in the cesspool of over-descriptivism with its walls of amber glistening in the moonlight? What emotion does that evoke? Nothing. It's like you're trying to figure out what am I looking at here? I, I err on the side of under-describing something in order to let the reader fill in with their own imagination. But think about the what emotion are you trying to evoke? Fear, disgust, hope, love, anger, remorse. Uh, try this, for example. <clears throat> a character is walking through a, a room and you put incense wafted heavily through the air. Okay, that's something, wafted heavily. It uh, evokes a certain kind of feeling and memories. Scent is a huge, huge memory thing. So I'll, I'll insert mine very t carefully, like one or two places in, a, in an entire book. But try this, walk through the room and smell sandalwood. An old girlfriend used to burn sandalwood and he had to force those memories down so he could keep walking. So you look at how this relates to the reader as opposed to just describing that it's permeated with the scent of sandalwood. Sandalwood, but it made the character do this and the readers will, will say, yes, I had an old girlfriend that burnt this crazy stuff, frankincense, it's crazy, it smells horrible. But think about it. What emotion are you trying to evoke? What are you trying to create that the readers can relate to? Find one and take your reader on that journey. So with the character who has the ex-girlfriend who used to burn sandalwood, maybe that's his flaw through the thing is that he has remorse. He has remorse in that she's the one that got away or that he's trying to find something different or that he punishes himself for doing things or that it was the right thing but he still has fond memories all of those things your readers can relate to they elicit that emotional response of man that could have been me wow and, and they become one with your with your character with the scene before you move on so take your journey on a reader take your reader on a journey through their feelings every scene every page feel something if you go through your page and this is uh, my beta readers are great they will uh, double check this for me if you go through a page or an entire scene and you don't feel anything it says like hey there, here's some stuff that happened but they didn't relate this is what you're trying to get away from i want to evoke this from this scene and that's hard you can't just write words and say oh man look at this i evoked fear yay cool there's, there's a certain intentionality that goes behind that, and most writers do it naturally. However, you can improve your writing if you if you uh, go after these emotions intentionally. Like, yes, this happened, and there's fear, and there's surprise, and there's shock. But uh, it, are you just writing scenes for shock factor? I've read books like that too. It's just shock after shock after shock. Hey, that's enough. Uh, what other emotion? There's got to be some other emotions. I've got to relate to something. So look at that. When you go back through your manuscript, look at it critically with what emotion should I, what emotion want, did I want to, and what emotion should I try to evoke from this? So this is a, a, a very important review technique. Do it as you're writing. Here's what, here's what it's going to build up to. Conflict resolution. I'm a big fan of those two elements within each scene. And then what, what comes out the other side? How does, how does it make the reader feel? Because in the end, readers may not remember all the details, but they will remember how the book made them feel. You remember the first time you read 
a Harry Potter book or the first time you read uh, <clears throat> uh, The Hobbit, anything like that. You read a book, it's like, this is how it made me feel. This is how I felt throughout it. I had to keep turning the page because I had to know. And that's that's the victory. That brings readers back for more. All right, that's enough. Uh, el uh, eliciting emotions. Intentionally come out, go after those emotions, and don't overwhelm your reader, but give them something to, to feel more than just something to think about. Peace, fellow humans.